everyone. Uh, this is the next video in a series uh, about modeling cost uh, with raster, primarily uh, through the cost distance toolset. Um, in the last video, we actually did the, the primary tool, the main one, cost distance, um, you know, to measure our, I'm using quotes here, distance to this source, uh, whereas distance was actually a factor of some cost. And those costs really varied, right? And the simplest of instances, we did it as Euclidean distance where there really was no cost. You could just move through each cell and impeded, so the cost was purely distance. That was the same as this one, except that we removed the ability to walk on streets, right? So the cost shifted slightly. It was still distance, though. Same thing with paths, still distance, but again, we removed a lot of the area you could walk leaving the cost, in this term just distance, to change slightly. Uh, then we actually instituted time, right? The time allowing you to walk uh, anywhere, uh, but knowing that it would cost more or less to walk on paths, um, or, you know, less to walk on paths than it would to walk through grass or a building. And then finally we did an abstract one where, you know, it was both kind of a factor of time and distance, but we also wanted to really heavily weight those areas where uh, your ex could potentially see you more than others to make it feel like you were, you know, feel like it was longer. So there was higher cost in those areas. And so in using all of those, uh, you know, that's excellent because each one of these, as I said, can tell you, right? So for time, I can go right down to this point right here and I could go right here knowing that's where I am and Boom, find out that it would take me 7.6 minutes to get there. Take me 8.7 minutes to get there. Take me 10.2 minutes to get there. So cost distance already tells you everything you need to know if you just need to kind of analytically look at areas and, you know, or visually look at them and say which one's farther or how long it takes you to get there, how much cost you'd accumulate. But you might also want to utilize these grids, right, to answer a different question, which is, all right, if that's my source, I have a series of destinations or, or travel areas to which I want to go, um, which is the closest? And beyond which is the closest, what are the given paths that I would have to take, right? So what is the least cost path that this one takes to get here versus this one versus this one, right? So you can get to start to see individual paths. You can start to see where paths merge, where things might cross. And you do that with what's called cost path. Um, so very cool tool, um, utilizes both of the inputs we created with the cost distance tool. Right, remember we checked that optional box which allowed us to create what was called a cost backlink. Right? So a cost backlink simply tells you for every cell what direction you would go to find the next lowest value. Right? We're envisioning that time here or cost or distance are actually surfaces. Right? With the lowest area being the source from which you measured the cost distance and the area is getting higher and higher like hills as you move out. And just like the way water would flow down the path of least resistance back to the, to the bottom, travel time, travel cost, distance would flow down a surface back to a source. All right, so one tells you the distance, the other tells you the directions. Um, and so in order to, to run any of these, you know, we'll just use the um, kind of the basic one as our example, taking um, you know, oop, uh, the one where you could go anywhere except the roads, and uh, we're going to test that distance from these areas I've called distance tests. These three. Um, so destination field uh, kind of is like a zone. Um, you know, you're going to actually use it because it connects back here to the bottom one path type. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then it just needs the distance and the direction, right? So in this instance, it was the all, the one where I could go anywhere but streets. And the same thing with the backlink. And I'll save this as, um, you know, example. And the, the last thing of interest is, is the path type. Um, you know, you get kind of three options here. The first is that each of your bloom, bloom, Oh, where to go? One, two, three. Each of your inputs um, will generate a path from them, and then it'll also show you the number of times they intersect too. 
Probably the most common, the easiest one, you get to see a path from each. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump here because it's easier to explain it that way. Best single will analyze all of your inputs and only return to you the least cost path. So closest, right? Shortest distance, shortest risk, whichever, right? You know, for example, who knows if, uh, you know, you, you imagine I had put one right here maybe. Um, I didn't, but let's say I put one right here right in the heart of it for the X that actually might appear to be farther quote unquote than that one because look at all this risky area where my X hangs out you'd have to pass through even though the distance is much shorter so that's best single right it pulls back whichever one is the least cost uh, each zone is kind of a hybrid of the two it's the least cost for each zone and the way you would define the zones up here is is ID right so if let's say I had 10 points you know, in each one of them, there were two zones, right? There were the points up here and then the points down here. And I'd give an ID for the zone of the points up here and the zone of the points down there. Um, I'll show you what the best single would look like, but again, each cell is the easiest, so I'm just going to do each cell. Bling, blah, boom, it's going to run its thing. And you're going to think that it didn't work. And I just want to pause for a moment to reflect on why that's the case. It very much did work. And if you zoom in, you'll be able to see the closer you get that there it is. Absolutely it worked. There's your little path. Do to do to do, right? Five, this is totally nominal. It's simply saying I'm path five. You know, I'm a unique path. This is my path that I would take. Look at that, there's another unique path that came from here. Value of four, all it means is I'm a unique path. Boom, right here, they met. And right, so they merged. Let's give that another unique path, one where those two are on but nobody else is on. And those two both kept going up here and blingity bloobity blah blah bloobity blah all the way until they hit the source. I think there's like a small area where they cross and it's like gray. That's the last last area where they all kind of merge together. And then you had this one coming from here. Right? That's its path that it would take. Right? Again, you just weren't allowed to go on street, so it didn't really matter for this one. This one just did the kind of you know, straightest line it was able to do where it wouldn't have to necessarily hit any, um, uh, hit or cross any streets, um, you know, when it came through. That was the direction that would be the best for that one to be able to travel. Uh, sorry. So, point that I'm trying to make here, though, is why can't we see these the farther that we get out? And the reason is because raster's geometry is the cell size, right? A point's geometry is nothing. There is no real geometry in a Point. It's just a point, um, you know, so it just marks a place. So to help you visualize it as you zoom out, ArcGIS grows the point. But that's not true of a raster, right? Raster has a very set geometry, and that's its cell size. The cell size won't magically increase because you're getting farther and farther and farther away. In fact, if anything, it becomes harder to see. Um, just to show you what the all single output would have looked like, would have looked just like this, right? Showing you that that's the best all single. So, point that I'm trying to make now is a cool little trick actually you can do, right? If you want to run a tool like this and you've got a super small cell size like I do here, it's one foot by one foot, you can actually use tools we've learned in the past videos, um, in this one in particular focal statistics, right? If you come to neighborhood and then grab focal statistics, um, you know, we've used this tool, I think, in the video as an analytical component, but you could actually use it visually here. I'm going to literally thicken the line, right? I'm just going to make the neighborhood around my cells, even though there are no data, take on the value, right? They're going to grow by a six by six window, and within that six by six window, they're going to look for the majority, right? Whichever value happens the most. So in this area, it'll be two, here it'll be three, four, five, and six. And it's essentially just going to thicken these paths. They're going to appear to be much larger. And the cool thing about it is it just creates a nice visual aid, right? This might be your analytical one, but here's a visual one. Now you can much more easily see the paths that are taken here. So knowing that, let's actually kind of look at the individual paths that we might be taking here. All right, so for one instance, I uh, you know, uh, only let you walk on pathways. Right, and if you can only walk on pathways, this is what it starts to look like. You know, you got to come up here, you got to go across, you got to cut, and you can cut through, and there you go. That's the quickest path there if you only have to walk on pathways. 
Coming up here, right, a little bit different. You're walking on a path or a sidewalk, and then that sidewalk, you start here. Because you're allowed through driveways and paths, it's actually easier to cut straight across here than it is to walk right up there. Changes a little bit, um, you know, with the X one, I think is probably the, uh, the best one to, to make the final demonstration. And just so we understand, right, all this area in red is the area where my X could see me. And then if we look at the X paths, well, it certainly reflects that. Right, this one's a little bit harder to see, this green one here. Oh, God, it has to walk through the X, but it's trying to get away from it. But really what we see, right, is these paths here, look at the way they'll do. Look at the extra distance they're willing to accumulate to avoid the X. Now, in some areas, it's impossible to do so. But in those areas where you have a choice, for example, here, I'll absolutely come into non-X territory and try to navigate my way through if it means that I can minimize passing through here. All of them get to this point and realize, you know, I could either walk up this area into crazy X view shed nightmare, or I can hugely increase my distance, but still have lower cost, right? Quote unquote cost, because I'm trying to avoid those areas where my X might be.